Yeah, this one's about water because I think it's kind of a very important thing in the, for the future. And so I've made lots of actually uh, sculptures based on the preciousness of water, holding it in your hand or in this case, putting a bit of water there and then also the, just the feeling and the movement of water. And that, that uh, movement of the water in the background is a shape that I use often in, in my glass as well. It just, it's just sh- one of the six earth energies that I've been playing with for a long time. I just think they're important too, the energies that produce a spiral and the way a fern grows, is, and that's a, the spiral motif. And it's everywhere in nature. And so I like to focus and simplify it and make sculptures out of it. And um, this one is more about um, clashing cr- cultures. In this case, the Buddhist and the Greek and um, I just think that they're so different in, in the way that they are a culture. And so I think they clash. There's one's quite different ideas. Oh, yeah, I have a watercolor there. I was sort of copying the Scythian piece that I made that is like a ritual cup. And um, I often like, it's very relaxing to do watercolor for me. And um, I like the feeling of the paper on the brush and all that sort of thing. It's kind of um, tactile and, um, and easy. Watercolors are what I travel with because it is so easy to, to take somewhere and show still color as well as drawing. You know, these uh, paintings that you have here, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the technique that you use with sure. the, the What I do is I start with mulberry paper, which is very thin, like rice paper, and I do a drawing and try and get a good convincing drawing down. And then I work with thin layer of acrylic, like a kind of a watercolor into it makes the paint the paper a little stronger and as I build up that painting I, I start to crush the paper and fold the paper and create kind of a topography and then I take little Chinese brushes and paint on top of that and if I do that over and over again it starts to build up kind of a, a surface of, of, of gestural little marks that, that has a, a, a quality of light and, and the color travels through it beautifully so it's, it's many, many, many layers. There's a lot of uh, time involved and a lot of patience involved. You kind of get used to loving that experience and letting it go and letting it dry and then going back to it. And, uh, and that, because I'm literally crushing it, it feels like I'm destroying it slightly every time and then it comes back. And that whole process is fascinating. But then I mount it to wood and that changes everything. It makes it solid. It goes from being a thin ephemeral thing to something solid and I use beeswax then on top of it and I can carve into the beeswax and tint it and add color to it and the final surface actually is beeswax with uh, with pigment. Another question for you is uh, can you talk a little bit about this um, series the heroes and it's an orphans? orphans. Yes. Um, well I live downtown in Victoria and I meet a lot of people and see a lot of people maybe in passing because I'm great downtown every day and I started developing this series based on passers-by and people I hardly knew. And some of them are people I know, but just the idea of how we interpret a portrait when we don't know who that person is. Who are they? Are they we, we might assume that they're a heroic figure or someone that's beloved because we made a portrait of them. But I make portraits of people who maybe are, have absolutely no presence except on the street or who I meet once or, or that sort of thing. And I, and I see a lot of people going through this process of starting out in life, especially young people who are who have that heroic idea that I'm going to change the world and whatever, and, and life happens to them, and, and sometimes they are orphaned, or sometimes their ideas are orphaned, and I just started feeling like, what is it between these two extremes, you know, where someone is abandoned or, or left to their own devices, and, or someone who is, has the strength to kind of push through everything, and, and so I'm playing with just how we interpret that in looking at a face. So uh, it's difficult for you to talk to them or uh, tell them that you're going to work in the program? And what is the reaction? Most of? people are really interested. Like, I've, I've been really surprised. Most people say yes. If I say, I want to take a picture of you. I'm a painter. I like making these paintings. And I might show them on my website so they know who I am, that I do a lot of paintings of faces. And most people are really happy about that. They don't mind. They may, I may never see them again. They may never see the portrait, which is really fascinating. A lot of some people I will never see again. 
you know, they're passers-by. And sometimes I take pictures, like, when I'm traveling, and I, I, I don't even know them. They're just literally a, a person in a crowd. And so that's, that's a whole other thing. I have to figure out who is that person. So I go through the processes. Okay, that look and that feel, what, is that, what does that mean to me? And so there, there are times when I know people really well, or friends or fellow artists, um, or I ask them what they do. That's the one thing I might say. And a lot of the people I've photographed are musicians and street musicians who are actually there in public, which is a little easier to photograph because they're available and they know they're being photographed. Um, but I might ask them what they do, and they might say, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a construction worker or something. And you go, oh my god, you look like a university professor, but you're a construction worker. And it's that kind of stuff where we just don't know until we dig a little deeper. And when you look at a portrait, unless it says, you know, Viscount so-and-so, you don't know who it is. It could be a, you know, a, a field worker, or it could be a prince. And so we look for clues. And in my portraits, I'm, I try to get up close, so there's not a lot of clues. You really have to look into your own interpretation of that face and that, that glance or that way the light is hitting or something will suggest it. How, how big is going to be the series? Um, well, it's interesting because the series is growing. Because they started out as little pieces, then they got bigger, and now they're getting bigger. So they're growing in numbers and in size. So I'm hoping to have about 20 or 30 of the bigger pieces before I really finish this group. I've got quite a few on the go.